Whoa, whoa, it is a sea change indeed. Well, this is going to be interesting. This is Wretched Radio, a sit-down conversation between Dave Rubin and Charlie Kirk, both conservatives. Charlie Kirk, a young man who is very popular on university campuses, persuading young people to be conservative because freedom is of paramount importance. He's also a professing Christian And he and Dave Rubin had a conversation about the Republican Party and its future. Where is it going specifically regarding the homosexual issue? If the conversation you're about to hear rightly expresses what is happening in that party, got a question for you. What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? For whom are you going to vote? So at the Republican convention, Peter Thiel, an openly gay man, spoke spoke before Trump. He said, I'm a proud gay man, got a standing ovation. Then Trump gets up there, talks about- And points him out. Yeah. Oh, right, points him out. And he yeah. said, it makes me very happy, was yeah. the exact quote he said. Because he has a little makes bit of me a, very a little happy. gay, that thing with the hand, but okay. But that, that the fact that there's been such a wholesale shift in that, that even right now, Ted Cruz or the guys that you might consider a little more of the Christian conservatives. Which my, I'm uh, one my, of them, uh, right? Mike Huckabee, right. Okay, yeah. so, so where you come from, basically, as far as I can tell, don't really see this as an issue anymore. Hello. It's no longer an issue, apparently, for a growing number of power brokers in the Republican Party. Is that true? Is that a fair premise? I think that's correct. And and so let me dive deeper and also pose a hypothetical to some of the leftists watching this. Peter Thiel, openly gay man, gets a standing ovation at the Republican National Convention and then pointed as the, uh, you know, pointed out by the candidate. Do you think that an evangelical pastor that was pro-Israel, that might be a Democrat, would have even been allowed to speak at the Democratic National mm. Convention or given a standing ovation. They booed God yeah. when he was when that was when that was mentioned. Okay, yeah. no, they literally did. What, what is the <laughs> shift here? The yeah. shift is the Republican Party is beginning to realize, hey, we're the party of freedom. Like it's cool if you want to do that, and I think it's it's a real sea change. Whoa, whoa! It is a sea change indeed. This is a fascinating conversation because of the professing faith of Charlie Kirk. He believes in heterosexual marriage, but as a Republican who apparently now has one remaining issue, freedom, that we have liberty, that we have rights. There are so many layers of problems with this, starting with any moral issue. For instance, if I'm going to apply the logic that we're hearing from Charlie Kirk, I can make abortion a non-issue. It's just about freedom. We've got to let people do whatever they want to do. No, as Christians, we care what people do. We can't impose our values on them. That's what the Pharisees did. Instead, we preach the gospel. God changes their heart. And then he goes about sanctifying their lives. That is what Christians do. But as we look out at culture to say, let's just let's just live and let live. Let's not have a position on this politically. I think what you're hearing is a sign of the times that there are so many social issues that are now swamped because of liberalism that that we're looking at, okay, where's where's the last line here to protect us so that we can live with some semblance of freedom? And that is why freedom is Charlie Kirk's oft repeated word. It's about freedom, it's about freedom. And so if we're about freedom, he concludes, then we have to let people be free to do whatever they want to do. I know that Charlie wouldn't apply that to every subject. I suspect he wouldn't apply it to abortion, any violent crime, abuse, embezzlement. We just got to let people be, which is the challenge of the libertarian. 
you want to be conservative in some ways, but permissive in other ways. It's a really tough worldview to hold without a great deal of tension, and in fact, tension to the point of snapping. If Charlie Kirk is right, the Republican Party is changing dramatically. Would you please consider for a moment what you will do when the Republican Party changes its position on the subject of marriage, just wipes it out. You're going to have to Google that if you're under 40. And they obliterate any conversation about it because we simply want people to have freedom. But let's just say, at least for now, they remain pro-life. You're going to vote for them? They want to permit a bad thing? But they're for a good thing? What are we to do? We might want to start thinking about that right now. Because even if you see Rand Paul beginning to, you know, endorse more of those, you know, favorable drug policy positions on the side of freedom or gay marriage, you know. What, 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 did he just sneak in drugs that we can also be permissive on drugs? Oh, boy. This is Charlie Kirk becoming not a conservative, but a libertarian. You're starting to see a sea change where it's becoming the soul searching the Republican Party has been doing over the last 30 years is what's the one thing that ties our party together? What do you think it is? Freedom. This, I'm not a political pundit, but this appears to me to be a, an admission. Um, we're not going to win any of these things. We, we, we've given up. Just let us be free. Freedom, freedom, freedom. And I think that's why you're starting to see that. And the left, they can't reconcile. What, what ties them together? Oppression. You know, like it's the oppression Olympics. It's like yeah. who suffers more, you know? And I think that's a really good thing. Segue to one, one final point is what I think is the position that needs to be articulated better is I have no problem with, you know, gay marriage, whatever. Like, I believe marriage, one man, one woman. That's my own personal position, right? I don't want to impose my values on others. Haven't we heard that before? Didn't we used to be critical of uh, Democrats who were professing Roman Catholics who would say, you know, I'm opposed to abortion personally, but I'm not going to impose my values on others. It appears Charlie Kirk has adopted that, and it, but it is highly unlikely he stands alone. This is libertarianism now surfacing, and if this thinking increasingly pervades the Republican Party, it is not going to be long before you, every two and four years, are going to be scratching your head. <laughs> and it's going to change the conversation. It used to be pretty clear. Used to be. Well, you've got a party of death. You you've got a you've got a party of promoting immorality, and you've got a party that promotes life and traditional marriage. Now you could have differences of opinion on tax rates, infrastructure bills, etc. But the 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 big issues, the moral issues, it used to be a clear choice. I'm not so sure it is anymore. And we should start asking the question, what are we going to do if the Republican Party starts abandoning one social issue at a time? I'm never going to tell government to have someone live a life. I think it's cool. You're married. I think it's great. And you should have all the same tax benefits, adopt children. It's great. Yeah. Right. But I you, feel the same way about you. Well, it's fine. It's like whatever. Like, yeah. But that's that's more of like a generational perspective. Here's where I think Republic. Now done. I think I understand how Charlie gets there. I, I think I do. It appears that he is believing that, hey, I can still hold on my th onto my thing without compromising, but I'm just not going to impose it on you. I wonder if we went back two or three or four years and listened to Charlie, if he was talking like that then. 
And this, if I might do an excursus and apply this to the church, is a reminder of the potential for compromise based on cultural whims. We, too, can be infected by the pressures of the world that says, hey, this is the thing. Now, we're seeing that, I believe, with critical theory. It is making its way into the church. I think that we are starting to see more and more this pressure. It's, it's, it's not reached the point where it appears the Republican Party is, but the homosexual issue, homosexual Christians inside of the church, how we view those issues. I think a really undeniable example of this is the role of women in the church. It's not just Charlie who's feeling the pressure from the world to acquiesce so that we can just be let alone. I think a lot of Christian churches are starting to do the same. Back to politics. Question, for whom will you vote? If those are the two viable choices, I know, always going to be a third party, and this might be something that we need to start talking about more in earnest because we used to say, well, they're not going to win, so I can't vote for them. They'll be throwing away my vote. I think I'm just making a prognostication. I think we're going to be having that conversation all over again soon. This is Wretched Radio. If you are a fan of the show, you can watch the entire daily broadcast of Wretched Radio at wretched.org. Hello, Maria. This is Todd Friel from your auto insurance company, noticing you're not taking advantage of any of our life insurance policies. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Really? Really, you're not afraid to die. That's funny. Listen to this clip from Paul Washer. I'm talking about you. So what do you think of that, Maria? 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 